So when I was at teacher's college, the buzzword of then was differentiated instruction. And I think it continues to be the buzzword now. And at that time, I thought to myself, now, how is that possible? Because it seemed to me that it meant if I had 26 different students, I would have to create 26 different lesson plans. Over time, I've actually come to appreciate the importance of it and really realize how possible it is to practice differentiated instruction. I would like to share with you my understanding through the analogy of sweet potato fries, or chips, actually. Now, sweet potato chips are my absolute all-time favorite type of food to eat for lunch. And what I would do is I would cut this right, right down here across, right down there, so they're individual thin slices, and I would put them in the oven, and ultimately the goal is for them to come out crispy but not overcooked in such a way that they're burned. It's exactly like the same as teachers. They are all hoping that each student would go through the process, this time not, not in the oven, but in the classroom, that at the end, coming out of it, that they are educated and then that they have become not only retained the information, but have become critical thinkers and that they've walked away with improvement and development, right? However, the way to do so is quite different because, as you know, sweet potato fries or chips, when you're cutting them, the chips or the pieces, some pieces are going to be wider and some pieces are going to be thinner. If I treat the sweet potato uh, chips exactly the same, meaning put them in the oven for the same amount of time, some will come out not fully cooked while others will be burnt. So, it's exactly the same thing as I would have to do in the classroom, that they're all undergoing through the same process, but my approach to each student would be slightly different. Some chips I would have to leave in the oven longer, while some I have to take out sooner than others. And it's exactly the same thing with students, that I may have to work with some students for a longer period of time, focusing on different things, and really, ultimately, hopefully, at the end, the objective is, just like the chips, fully cooked but not burned, that students become educated, they, they learn and become critical thinkers. And I think through the use of analogy of soup potatoes, it's really the same as differentiated instruction in the classroom. So here's an example of what differentiated instruction will look in an English classroom. I think it would be really cool in a unit on identity, we could present different African tribes, pictures of different African tribes. And step number one for students is to choose, based on interest, a tribe, a culture that they would like to know more about. Step number two would be research of that culture and then have a writing piece. It could be a paragraph or two paragraphs about that culture. In step number two, it is my job as a teacher and it doesn't matter the starting ability of the students in terms of their research and writing ability. My job as a teacher is to work with each and every single one of the students so that they all improve on their research skill and on their writing skill. Step number three is while the research is going on, we will be doing reading of different voices and different stories that come from Africa. And we would then use the research piece that students have done as a reference point to see whether the myths, whether the stories, whether the cultural beliefs and traditions in those cultures are echoed in the stories that we read. We can do comparisons of similarities and contrasts in terms of the myths, again, and the stories that are created out of that. And I think number three is quite cool in that it expands students' perspective and expands students' experience beyond simply a Eurocentric one. Step number four is students can then, because this is a unit on identity, students can then explore their own identity, their own culture, and who they are. And the output is completely based on students' learning styles. Students can conduct a photo essay of themselves. Students can write a story about themselves. Students can then act out, do a drama piece about themselves. Students can do a presentation about themselves. Students can write a song about themselves. 
So as you can see from step one, two, three, four, it doesn't mean at all creating 26 different lesson plans for 26 different students. It's a common framework of steps, one, two, three, four. But going through the steps, students learn based on tailored and diversified lessons that are based on number one, students' interests, based on students' learning styles in step number four, based on students' abilities and areas for improvement in step number two.